Now, uh, what else? Okay. In relation to uh, ness, okay. Um, <clears throat> in relation to uh, uh, option, alam na natin ito. Ah, this one I did not present on sa contracts. Uh, you may be uh, uh, faced with a problem na ang tanong walang kinalaman sa facts, di ba? Wala lang, trip lang niyang magtanong, okay? Kahaba-haba ng facts, pero ang tanong, explain the nature of an option contract, which you can answer without reading the facts, okay? Wala lang, ayun uh, ang tanong niya eh, hindi iyon ang sagutin niyo, okay? Uh, obviously, as discussed uh, already, in an option contract, okay, the optionee, who is the offeree, is given a period within which to decide Uh, whether to enter into that contract or not, whether to accept the offer or not, and he 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 and there is a consideration uh, which is separate and distinct from the price, which is something paid or promised that would make the agreement an option contract. Again, without such consideration, you cannot call that a contract. You can call that simply as an option agreement. Okay. Now, uh, into uh, the uh, subject matter, okay? Again, uh, sale may pertain to uh, things or rights. We have discussed already the requirements for a right to be the subject matter of a contract. Pareho lang yon that the right must not be intransmissible. As far as things are concerned, the same requirements in contracts that the thing must not be contrary to law, etc. It must not be outside the commerce of men. Uh, it must not be impossible, etc. But there is one other requirement specifically under the law on sales. Concretely, the problem would pertain to a sale of a generic thing. May a sale of a generic thing be a valid sale? If, if you consider only the definition of uh, this contract, Under 1458, uh, ang nakalagay, determinate thing. Di ba? Uh, does it mean, therefore, that uh, if the subject matter of the sale is a generic thing, that the sale is void? The answer is no. Okay? Because under 1460, 1458, 1459, 1460, second paragraph of that uh, article, okay? Uh, the requirement of the law that the thing should be determinate is sufficiently complied with if the thing is capable of being made determinate at the time the contract was entered into without the need of a new or further agreement. Okay? So, uh, anong implication nito? It is possible for a sale involving a generic thing to be a valid sale. Okay? As long as the three requirements are present. Okay? First, that it is capable of being made determinate. But in a way, all generic things are capable of being made determinate because the moment you deliver the thing, initially, generic siya, pero upon delivery, it becomes a determinate. But that is not what is required by law. It must be capable of being made determinate at the time the contract was entered into. Plus, finally, the other requirement is without the need of a new or further agreement between the parties. But can there be such a sale? Of course, there can be. Okay? Uh, I'll, I'll give you two scenarios. Example. In one contract, uh, the object of the sale was a dog. Simply a dog. The features of the dog were not agreed upon by the parties. Wala lang. Basta dog lang siya. And the price was agreed upon, probably 50,000 pesos, okay? Pangalawang scenario, sale of a car, okay? A brand new 2010 uh, Mitsubishi Lancer EX. Mayroong ganon, di ba? Mukhang maganda ang uh, Lancer na ito. EX brown, ah, black, parang forest black ang color, okay? Uh, status of these sales. As the object, of the sales are both generic, okay? Because when would a thing be considered as a determinate thing? 1460 provides that a thing would be considered determinate if it is 
particularly designated or physically segregated from all others of the same class. Okay? Madali lang ang particularly designated, separating it from all others. Example, as to cars, uh, pag mayroon na siyang plate number, eh, particularly designated na. Or even without plate numbers, because when you buy a car, a brand new car, walang plate number yan. Wala pa. Di ba? Minsan, isang buwan pa bago ibigay ng LTO. Okay? But, uh, uh, may that already be a determinate car? Yes. Pag nakalagay na doon ang chassis number, ang uh, motor number, etc. Okay? So, it is particularly designated, separating it from all others of the same class. There could be a million Mitsubishi Lancer EX around the world. But because you have the chassis number, it is already a determinate thing. Or even without particularly designated, designating the thing, walang plate number, walang chassis number, the thing may be determinate under 1460 if it is physically segregated from all others. Okay? For example, uh, in a particular showroom, di ba? Minsan may mga showroom, okay? ang mga uh, dealers, there may be a specific area, maybe at the right side of the uh, of the showroom, my car don. It is physically segregated from all others. Even if pare-pareho sila ng mga kotse, at least this car is physically segregated from all the other cars, making the car a determinate thing. Or madali is the car found in the garage in this address. E kung isang car lang siya, that may be a valid sale because the thing is physically segregated from all others of the same class. Okay? Now, uh, under the facts, a dog is obviously generic. It can never be determinate. No argument. Okay? Pero doon sa second contract, sale of a car, Mitsubishi Lancer 2010 model na EX Black uh, is that a determinate thing already? The answer is no. There could still be thousands or hundreds of thousands of such kind of cars. When you buy a car from a casa or in this case from uh, uh, ano itong dealer ng uh, uh, Mitsubishi Lancer, okay? Um, marami dyan. Uh, ganong ano. You don't buy a determinate car, Okay? When you buy a car, you only state the features. Okay, Mitsubishi Lancer 2010 model, uh, black, uh, probably automatic or uh, or uh, manual transmission. Okay, but obviously that's a generic car. But uh, may that as to the dog, is that a valid sale? Of course not. Okay. Uh, because it is not a determinate thing and it is not capable of being made determinate at the time the contract was entered into without the need of a new or further agreement. Why? Hindi sila nagkasundo kung ano ang breed ng kaasong ito. 50,000, e eh kung ang seller mag-deliver lang sa kanya ng askal, hindi matutuwa ang buyer, di ba? 50,000 ang babayaran niya, tapos askal lang ang i-deliver, mukhang pang asosena lang ang dating, di ba? Eh normally, that would only be what? 300, 400 pesos, okay? Now, uh, in fact, even if they agreed, for example, on, ano ba yung mga medyo may breed, mga tipong uh, Rottweiler, mga ganyan, ay iba pa rin. Why? Malay natin, yung seller would deliver isang 25 years old na na Rottweiler. Eh, hindi rin matutuwa ang buyer, di ba? Mayroon pa bang aso na 25 years old? Pwede yata, no? Pero alam ko, parang 20. 20 years old, okay? In other words, there should have been an agreement still by the parties as to the features of the dog in order for the sale to be valid. It is a void sale. But as to the car, ay wala na. There is nothing more to be agreed upon by the parties. It is capable of being made determinate without, at the time the contract was entered into without the need of a new or further agreement and therefore that sale would be a valid sale. Okay? Actually, in a sale of a car, Diamond Motors, I was referring to Diamond Motors, uh, the thing would be determinate. Alam mo nang determinate yun 
when you sign the deed of sale. Pag pirma mo sa deed of sale, nakabayad ka na ng initial payment actually, you would have to, uh, you would see na mayroon ng uh, chassis number, etc. Yung kotse. Okay? Now, uh, so, uh, that the thing must be determined is one of the requirements for the sale to be valid. Okay? Into this, uh, um, uh, in, still into the subject matter, okay? In sale of things. Um, in a way, I have mentioned when I discuss contracts that uh, under the law on sales, the law does not require the thing itself to already be in existence in order for the sale to be valid. In other words, sale of future things or sale of future goods may be a valid sale as long as the thing or the goods have the potentiality of existence. Okay? So, it is a common sale, lalo na sa ating mga magsasaka, where they would sell actually their palay which they haven't even started to plant yung, uh, uh, yung uh, seeds. Okay? Halimbawa, ang, ang planting season January, ang uh, harvest season April or May, December pa lang, they would already sell the harvest from a certain rice field. Would that be, may that be a valid sale? The answer is yes. Okay? Uh, because obviously, Though the palay sold is not yet in existence, it has the potentiality of existence. Okay? Ang problem dito would pertain to a scenario where, uh, again, sale of palay that will be harvested in a specific rice field. Okay? Now, uh, what if not even a sack of palay was harvested from that rice field? Wala. Okay? Uh, so, obviously, the, the seller was not able to deliver not even a single kavan of palay to the buyer. The first question, what is the status of the sale? The second question, can the buyer hold the seller liable for the failure to deliver uh, the kavans of palay? As to the first question, there is a claim, at least by one author, that in order for the sale to be valid, the thing must actually come into existence. That is not true. What is only required by the law is that that thing must have the potentiality of existence. Even if the thing did not actually come into existence, the sale is still a valid sale, may still be a valid sale. It has the consent of the contracting parties, my object of the sale, my price. All the three essential requisites are present. The problem actually in that scenario, if no palay was har harvested, is that the seller failed to comply with his obligation to deliver and transfer ownership over the thing sold. Yun ang problema into the performance of the obligation. And that question would be relevant to the second, that matter would be relevant to the second question uh, as to whether the uh, buyer can hold the seller liable for his failure to deliver the kavans or sacks of palay. The answer to the second question, actually, parang ordinarily, he would be liable because there was failure to comply with an obligation. But you must have discussed in uh, obligations that uh, there are exemptions to non-performance. Okay? And the common reason why an obligor cannot be held liable despite failure to perform is a for two witos event. Okay? If the reason probably why the seller was not able to harvest palay was because of pestilence, okay? uh, was because of uh, typhoon uh, which struck the area, ah, he cannot be held liable for damages. Okay? While he cannot be held liable for damages, but can the seller at least recover the price if the, if the, can the buyer at least recover the amount paid if he already paid the seller, the price agreed upon? The answer is yes. Because then, uh, you can invoke, uh, the, uh, principle of unjust enrichment, okay? Uh, if the seller would be al, allowed to retain when he was not able to deliver, he would be unjustly enriched at the expense of the buyer. Okay? Now, uh, again, 
However, if the reason why the seller was not able to live, deliver was due to his fault or negligence, kaya hindi siya nakapag-harvest dahil pinag-iitak niya ang mga palay, o kaya he was negligent. He never uh, had the, the rice field uh, cleaned. Ang pagpapatubo ng palay ay hindi ganun kadali. Sabi nga sa kanta, planting rice is never fun. Okay? Masarap, masarap lang kumain pero hindi ganun kadaling magtanim ng rice. Ang alam ko, you have to uh, uproot the weeds mga twice uh, before the harvest season. Otherwise, pag hindi mo ginawa, mas mataas pa ang weeds kaysa sa palay mo. And therefore, wala yung fruits. Okay? So, uh, again, uh, uh, if, if the reason why he was not able to deliver was due to the fault of the seller, then he may be held liable for damages. Okay? Now, uh, in relation to um, okay, one other. Ah, I mentioned uh, um, in relation to this kind of sale, uh, a sale of hope. Okay? If a buyer bought a ticket, a lotto ticket, okay? And however, when he bought the ticket, that ticket was the subject of a draw five days before the sale. May the sale be a valid sale? The answer is, it depends on whether the, the ticket is a losing ticket or a winning ticket. The law would consider the sale to be void if it is a sale of a vain hope. It would be a vain hope kung losing ticket siya at ibinenta. Okay? However, if this is a winning ticket, of course, it can be the basis of a valid sale, which is basically an assignment. Okay? Ang tanong ng iba dito is, why would anyone holding a winning ticket sell the ticket? Diba? E eh, nanalo na siya eh. Ay maraming rason. Diba? Um, baka nga dahil prohibited siya from... Uh, participating in that uh, in that uh, lottery kasi employee siya ng ganyan or better yet gusto niya ng cash okay uh, if he will be the one to uh, incash the the ticket pupunta pa siya kung more than a million i was informed you have to incash that from the head office pa eh kung taga Sambuanga ka pupunta ka pa ng Manila baka dumat bago ka dumating na hold up ka pa edi eh sayang naman di ba so you can just assign your rights under the ticket uh, uh, normally for a price less than the amount won kung napanalo mo 10 million maybe you would uh, agree to a sale for 900 9 million 500,000 di ba okay na at least walang risk ng mga hold up okay or dahil may urgent need, kailangan mo na ng pera dahil na hospital ang uh, uh, kapatid mo or anak mo, therefore uh, there can be a sale of a winning ticket. Okay? 